1978, I started working on mechanical harvesting of peppers. And at that time, um, I was looking to see if there was any particular pepper variety that would be better. I had 20 different pepper varieties, um, from jalapeno to bell to uh, little tiny cherry peppers, the size of your thumbnail. And uh, so I distributed those in California, Oklahoma, two in Michigan, and one in Kentucky. And then I took my harvester around, uh, the experimental uh, mechanical USDA harvester, uh, to all of those locations. And like you'd ex expect Murphy's Law, only two of those spots really did good. The one in California, uh, the irrigation never quit, and so the trickle irrigation is way too wet. In Oklahoma, it was 100, 105 degree temperature, so the fruit never set. <laughs> Uh, in Kentucky and in Michigan, we had pretty good crops, but I want to see if there's any unique differences between, um, uh, say, variety A of cherries and a variety B of cherries. Um, bells were difficult to harvest because they had such large internal voids, and op on the opposite end of that, jalapenos were one of the easiest because they had a very small void and they had a very thick wall, so you could almost use them for batting practice. And so we continued to work on that. Um, uh, we worked with uh, one of the growers in the Saginaw area, uh, Greg Bays and his father. And they liked what we were doing so much that Greg quit growing peppers and went into manufacturing mechanical pepper harvesters. And so he's been doing that ever since. And uh, right now he has one of my ag engineering uh, students working there, Paul Dorr. And uh, Greg Bays uh, continues to uh, manufacture the mechanical pepper harvesters uh, that are used, uh, especially in the Southwest. And I don't know how many he has out, but he's been doing a good job. And, and uh, of course, these harvesters are not inexpensive. They may be 200, maybe 300,000. I'm not sure what the prices are today.